you know, Colin, with Omar Navai is out till June, I know Buck says that Tomas Nita is going to get the bulk of the playing time, but if the lineup keeps faltering towards the bottom and you insert an eight hitter that has pop and could, you know, hit a homer with a couple of guys on and change a ball game, change a season, I got to think you have to consider playing Alvarez four to five times a week. You're a 21-year-old kid, Colin, and you're playing once a week, twice a week. You're going to try so hard to do so much. And you kind of saw that even on Sunday where he swung on a pitch in a dirt. I think it was a two, two count where, you know, he might've walked there if he was had a little bit more plate discipline, he needs the reps. He needs the chance. And if Buck's going to say the pitchers love throwing to him, let's see them throw to him more than once or twice a week. I want to see what he's got. I've watched Alvarez since he was in Brooklyn because I announced a handful of Cyclones games. I've been watching him since he was in high A. And there's no denying the dude can crush a ball. I saw him hit a ball that, if I'm not mistaken, clocked someone who was riding the Cyclone uh, roller coaster, uh, you know, on the other side of the the ballpark there in Coney Island. That he can knock it a country mile. Defensively, yeah, he's not that great. Um, and we're kind of there's an ebb and flow these these years uh, in baseball with uh, with catchers. Uh, you either want that catcher who is an offensive powerhouse or a defensive powerhouse. And right now it's starting to go back into the defensive powerhouse. And that's going to be very important, especially with the pitch clock, because some of the pitches are going to feel rushed. They're going to have errant pitches. You're going to need someone who's going to have the experience to be able to block it, knock it down, uh, keep everyone in check, keep everyone on base, uh, and occasionally be asked to throw someone out. He's not there yet. Uh, I also, I'm not sure that he's there maturity wise either um he's there's there's still a lot of kid left in him and i can say that now because at 43 if you're 21 years old you're a kid to me and i'm going to say that and i'm sorry uh but it in all honesty i i think there's still some things that need to be polished uh with him defensive being a huge aspect of it um you watch tomas nito a veteran move. He had one ball that got past him the other day. Uh, and then he learned from that mistake and was able to make some very, very good blocks uh, that were saving uh, the base runners from, from advancing. Uh, that is a veteran move. That is something that you learn over time. And that's something that Alvarez needs to do. His reps are going to come in Syracuse. Everyone goes nuts because he gets three home runs a night and knocks in 60 ribbies. And it's just like, wow, this guy needs to be here right now. Yeah, but he's our catcher. If he was in any other position, if he was just going to be a career DH, that would make perfect sense to me. But in all honesty, the kid needs more time. He needs more reps. Losing Narvaez to me was a much bigger deal than Alvarez not getting enough time. Yeah, and I, you know, I worry though that, and, I, and listen, those are great points. The pitch clock, you know, working with veterans, they're going to get Verlander looks like the end of the month. So you're going to have two Hall of Famers in there. You're going to have Sanga, who, you know, the ghost fork ball was just filthy. Five strikeouts on the first two innings Saturday. That was fun to watch. Ended up with six. I thought he was going to have 10 on Saturday. Yeah. So you make a good point. But, like, now Francisco Alvarez, if he's not going to be DH and he's going to catch once or twice a week here, he's staying here until June. I just don't – I think he's losing out on very important reps by not playing at all.